everyone. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to go ahead and start our meeting at 5.33 p.m. Call to order. And let's go ahead and start with the roll call. We'll start with Commissioner Brewer. Here. Mr. Clement. Here. Commissioner Mead. Here. Commissioner Etchcombe. Here. And I'm Commissioner Couch, and I'm here also. So next item is public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy. This time is reserved for members of the audience to address the Planning Commission on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Commission. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each and it is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The commission is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to ad addressing the commission, any handouts? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I promise I'll have it memorized by the end of the year. <laughs> Thank you. Hold on. I got it. Uh, the commission is prohibited from take from by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to address, addressing the commission, any handouts for commission will be provided to the commission secretary for distribution to the commission and appropriate staff. The public will have an opportunity to comment on items on the agenda once the item has been called and the chair opens the item to the public. Thank you. With that said, do we have anybody from the audience that'd like to address the commission? Looks like no. Any emails, anything like that? No? Okay. All right, let's move on to item number four, approval of minutes from the regular meeting on August 14th, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Have we had a chance to review them? Mr. Chair, if there's no other comments, uh, I move that we uh, approve the uh, minutes from our last meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and take a vote on approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Start with Commissioner Clement. Aye. Commissioner Mead. Aye. Commissioner Brewer. Aye. And Commissioner Echegon. Aye. And I'm Commissioner Couch, and I vote aye as well. All right, we're gonna move on to item number five. All right, I have a note here in front of me. If I do anything, please help me out. But we are going to, what are those first words? Be there? adding a subsequent action item. We're gonna be adding a subs subsequent action item for approval of resolution number 2023-13. What is that word? Sorry. Say it right. Um, you have to bring it to a vote. Oh. So we have to add yeah. the action item. It basically was left off the agenda. We have to bring it to a vote to add it to the agenda tonight. Okay. Um, can we get a motion to approve the subsequent action item? No. If you can call that uh, commission. Yes. Chair. Yes. Yeah, so we'd like to bring this to a vote. Do I have a first to add an item? That was not on the original agenda to the action item tonight. I moved at it. Okay. So I have, a, do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. We will take a vote. Commissioner Echegon. Aye. Commissioner Brewer. Aye. Commissioner Clement. Aye. Commissioner Mead. Aye. And Commissioner Couch, and I, I approve. All right. So we will be adding that to the item. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So are we going to go ahead and have Steve come up and talk about the item we added or? Go ahead and go to number five. What's that? Oh, public hearing for that one we just added. Okay. So public hearing, um, item number five, tentative subdivision map track number 939, major site plan review number 2022-02 and plan unit development 2022-01. And uh, a request by 
Is it Walton? Yes. yes. Walton Castanas to divide 52.61 acres into 280 single family lots and, re and a remainder. Steve, take her away. Good evening, Commission. Steve Brandt, City Planner. Uh, this is a request, as the chair said, to um, for a tentative subdivision map. It's also accompanying it as a major site plan review and planned unit development. The project is uh, 52.6 acres and would create 280 single family lots along with a park site, a uh, some outlots for trails, extension of the um, storm pond and a remainder parcel. So um, on the screen, you can see the, the site, it's most mostly in uh, orchard right now, uh, the APN it's zoned low density residential and um, there's an existing irrigation ditch that runs along the north side and the west side, and that ditch would be undergrounded and placed underneath what are, where I'm going to show you the trail is going to be in the neighborhood. So this is the proposed subdivision. Um, it's going to be developed in two phases. Uh, the green lots uh, would be phase one, be 155 units would also include the park and the extension of the basin. Um, phase two is the blue, uh, would be 125 units. And then the remainder parcel, which would be a future future development that's also zoned low density residential would be, uh, is the gray area. Yeah, go to the next slide. Oh, I think you skipped one. There it is. So um, access points, there's two access points from Bush Street. One would be the new road on the northwest corner. And then um, Madrid Street already exists as a half street um, south of Bush Street. And so that would be widened to its full extent uh, with lots. And then there'd be um, Oporto Street would be extended um, for another way into the subdivision. And then down in the southeast corner, there is a stub street uh, to the east called Athens Street, and that would be the, a connection. So all of those connections would be made in the first phase of the development. There's a trail that's proposed to run through the, the site, the entire length. If you were to walk, it would be approximately 0.7 miles, give or take. Um, it goes through the park, it would be about one acre. Um, and again, part of the purpose of the trail is, is a place, we need a place for the, uh, ditch to be undergrounded. So there'd be a, a, a pipeline underneath, um, the trail and, um, and then, um, it would, con as it gets down to the pipeline gets down to the bottom, uh, the Southwest corner, it would, um, continue West. And then you can see the storm drain basin. There's an existing storm drain basin west of where we're showing the, the new basin. Uh, it's off the screen, um, but that's the basin that's south of the stadium. Mm -hmm. So there's a PUD proposed uh, because the minimum lot sizes proposed are less than the, the standard that's um, in the zoning ordinance. There's really two types of lots in there because they've got two types of home plans that they're wanting to build, um, what they call area and Madison. The area at homes will fit on a minimum 42 by 80 lot and the Madison 42 by 90. Uh, the average lot size is 3,977 square feet with the smallest one being 2876. So for purposes of the ordinance in the PUD, we would say the minimum uh, lot size is 2870. Um, as you know, we've been talking about minimum lot sizes all this year. This project has been going on during that whole process. So they kind of, um, in, in ter at least in terms of our staff review, both our, our general review and review of this project has kind of gone back and forth together. They were like informing each other. So in fact, um, 
I think one version of this map was even shown at one of the council study sessions as an example of what we're talking about. And um, so um, the, the council did approve the changes um, to the zoning ordinance, uh, but even if those, uh, they're not in effect yet, but even if they were, uh, this project would still require a PUD because the minimum lot size would now be 5,000 square feet, so. Keep going, the minimum setbacks proposed, uh, 10 feet to living space, 18 feet to the garage. The interior side would be five, the street side would be 10, and the rear would be 10. Those those are really close to what the standard uh, setbacks are. They're just uh, some, actually they're really close. Um, so the homes are designed to meet the front setback requirements. And most of them, when you actually look at the footprints, are going to have more than 10 feet in the rear. So re 10 feet is the minimum. Uh, this sketch shows, um, the sketch shows kind of how the trail and the lots would interact. Um, we wanted to see how the, you know, because every home has a water stub, a sewer line, um, and other things. We wanted to see how that would all work. Um, and uh, the engineering, uh, team Public Works has reviewed this, and they they're they're confident they can make this work once we get to the design phase. Because you you're going to have an irrigation pipe with all those stub stub lines going running on top of it. Um, and then the pictures are pictures of a similar project that Wathika Sanos has done in Clovis. That kind of it was the same situation. They had a ditch they needed to underground. And so this kind of shows an idea of, of what this is gonna look like when it's done with the wider uh, trail, uh, replacing a sidewalk in front of the homes. Wide, 10 feet wide. So 10, so the, the full trail width is 30 feet. So it'll be 20, 10 feet in the middle that's paved and then uh, 10 feet of landscaping on each side. So these are the variety of homes that were submitted. The, the plan numbers correspond to the square footage of the homes. Um, this is probably some of the biggest variety we've seen in terms of types of homes that people can choose from. Um, so we don't think there's not gonna be any problem meeting the six pack requirement for variety of homes. And um, one of the homes even has a built-in junior accessory dwelling unit if someone wants to choose that, that design. Um, there is one, I think there is one, one, the smallest home does have a one car garage. Um, and I think all but two of them are, yeah, all but two of them are um, two story. Uh, go to the next slide. This shows some examples of what the homes will look like. That, that's not all of them, but that's, that's the, uh, the Madison uh, homes. And go to the next one. So in your packet, we have the uh, draft resolution with the recommended findings and conditions. Uh, one of the conditions um, we've been talking about today um, with the applicant, uh, condition 17 requires a, a deadline for when the park would be built. We'd put in what's in your packet is have it built by the 10th home. Um, and talking to them today, they're saying that uh, the play equipment is have they're having a hard time getting play play equipment. There's a long lead time right now, so um, talking with the city manager, we're comfortable pushing that out to say it needs to be done by the fiftieth home that's built, which is still only one third of the first phase. So um, we think that's a reasonable uh, deadline. So we are recommending approval of the tenant subdivision map, the major site plan review, and the PUD. And um, because this is a PUD, this project will go to the city council for final approval. So your uh, vote today is for a recommendation to council. And I'm open for any questions. Do we know what the average lot size is for the subdivision that it's already there to the, to the east? I do not know, but it's, it's more than this. It's more than this. Yeah. 
it's I would if I was if you forced me to guess, I'd say it's in the six thousand range. The pictures that we're looking at, uh, five feet on the interior. So these artist renditions are actual pictures. That is ten feet between those units. Is that correct? The the picture, like the bottom left picture. Yeah, that's an actual image in Clovis. So the the homes that yeah, that's ten ten feet between the homes. Five feet to the property line. Five feet to property line, and then it, five it, feet on the other property okay. line. <clears throat> And then the, the back, the walkway, you say that's uh, 10 feet and then 10 on each side for yes. landscaping. So in that and that landscaping will be part of the uh, community facilities district. So it'll be, so it won't be maintained by the property owner. It'll be maintained by um, a landscaper that is contracted with the city. What about trees? There'll be trees in it. <laughs> between the street and the sidewalk yeah i went over and i drove that area i don't know how many homes are in that area right now but there are a whole lot of sidewalks with orange paint on them a whole lot of curb and gutter with orange paint because they have been lifted some mm -hmm. very significantly by trees and we've had that discussion a little bit before in the past that uh does this mean we're going to have 280 sidewalks that sidewalks are painted lifted. orange I hope in not. the next few years? Then why are we putting trees between the street and the sidewalk where we have evidence in this city that they are extremely destructive and extremely expensive? And as a property owner, I can tell you, I know this because I had to replace curb and gutter and sidewalks because of the street tree. And there are a lot of them and they're dangerous. So why are we doing that? So I may not be able to change your mind, but I can tell you that we have different standards now. We have a limited number of tree species that we will allow in the parkway. Those are, and we also require um, <clears throat> um, root barriers to be installed. And so the species that we pick are species that normally the roots go down, not up. And um, and the root barriers help make that happen. So um, we're trying to do things that uh, will prevent what has been happening in the past. And so this would be the responsibility of a community facilities district and not the individual property owners. Is that correct? Does this mean within, there's an HOA with, within and the trail monthly dues? With, within the trail right away, yeah, they'll be they'll pay. They will pay into the district and then it'll, it'll be a fund managed by the city. So the property owner is going to pay for it anyway. Yes, but not have to do the actual work. Because that's, you know, anywhere from, I don't know what it is right now. When I had to do it, it was between three and $5,000, which is a fair amount of change. And that's several years ago. It's probably at least double that now, if not more. I'm just thinking it's... Uh, is that really a wise decision? That's just a rhetorical question. <laughs> I get. I guess the only question I would have is: there's some type of rule for the city that they go. You know, we go off of. When he's talking about the trees, I mean, when they spec, you know, these subdivisions, do they? Is there something state guideline we have to follow or we just have something the city put in place x amount of you know trees plants things like that is there a certain guideline we have we have a standard there's a list of trees species it's only about 10 or 12 that we say these are the ones that we will accept in the parkway because we know they have success in the parkway. So some of the trees that have lifted up sidewalks in the past, those trees are not on that list. Yeah, I I just didn't know if environmentally there was a, there's some standard we have to plant X amount of trees every subdivision or is that just- No, there's not a standard oh, okay. be, that beyond the city standard, no.
state. Yeah, so the city standard is to um, put to have street trees. Um, if the sidewalk, if the sidewalk is adjacent to the curb, then the street tree would be behind it in the in the front yard. Um, in this case, where there's a trail, you're gonna have ten feet between the curb and the trail. Um, in other subdivisions, some of them that have had the problems, there's usually only five feet between the curb and the, and the sidewalk. So the, the 10 feet is gonna give us some an extra um, cushion from, from that type of issue. The other thing we require is there have to be certain, they have to be certain distances because you know, you've got the water line coming through, you've got the sewer line coming through. They have to be certain distances from that as well. Do they have a tentative start date? Uh, the applicant is here. You can ask them that. Okay, we'll do that. Any other questions for Steve? Okay. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe one, maybe you can answer this, Steve. But so there's two existing homes right now on the north edge off of Bush Street, correct? One of the homes on the site on the far northwest is was recently removed, and there's just the two oak trees left. Mm. Um, but there's to the to the east eastern east, edge. east of that would be not part of this site, right? But there's two homes, and then I believe that's church. The yeah. church. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we're going to have homes that are going to go right up against these existing homes, if I'm not mistaken. There's going to be homes on. Um, so right now there's homes facing Madrid, so there'll be new homes that are facing those homes. Yes, I, yeah, I see. There's three lots there on the, on that angle. Mm -hmm. um, will they be allowed to put a two story there? My concern is that, and I I know there's obviously, the homeowners aren't here to, today, but. My concern is putting a two-story there where they can see into the yard of the these existing homes. Yeah, I think we've had concerns in the past from the public about a two-story coming up against an existing subdivision there. Um, if you're talking about the three lots that are... Yeah, I think of, it's yeah, three, one, right at an angle yeah. there. 150, 151, and 152. Yeah, yeah. on the angle, yeah. The one thing I would say about that is those lots are a lot deeper mm. than most of them. So mm. they're going to have a pretty decent sized backyard Let's in see. between the home and the lot, oh, back yeah. lot line. Yep. You know, the trails now to the, through the middle. Yeah. It looks like one of those lot lines is up to 176 feet. Yeah. So they're going to have pretty, a pretty good. No, and they're going to keep, that's they're probably going to keep the, just the same distance from the front from the front setback, huh? So there's going to be quite a bit of distance in the backyard there. I would think that's yeah. what they're doing, but yeah. if, you, if you're if you concerned about it, you can make a condition to require that they be set forward because mm. the zoning would let them put it wherever, wherever they, want. they want on the lot. But I, I would assume that would be their plan to put it forward. Okay. Any other questions for Steve? That that remaining acreage, is there any, there's just really no plan for that as of right now? No, I asked and they don't have a specific plan right now. It it most likely would be more lots, but um, you know, the, because that's what it's zoned for now, but they could come back with something else mm -hmm. potentially. And we'll deal with that when you when yeah. you propose it. So, I, I guess that remaining was it six point five acres? It looks like five five. Are they going to put some type of wall up, or is it just going to be open 
to the neighborhood. I believe it's just going to be open right now. But it will have that trail, at least along two sides, and then the street along the other, along the north side. We are looking at a wall, though, around the entire project, right? There'll be a block wall next to the freeway, but it's not required on the west side. But it'll um, be on the north side where those existing homes are. Um, there'll be a it'll be a wood fence, likely. So are they going to? They're going to go off the existing fence that the existing neighborhood has, or they're going to put an additional fence. The, well, they'll probably there'll be a lot of regrading right there because there's a ditch there now. So they'll fill in the ditch and then put in a fence at the property line. Anything else? Right. At this time, we'd like to open it to the public at six o'clock. Good evening, commissioners. Can you hear me okay? Yes. My name is Adrian Burns. I represent the developer Wathen Castanos Homes. I'm their vice president of land development and forward planning. Very grateful to be here this evening. It's been a bit of a time coming. The city staff, I just want to voice my appreciation for our working together and coordination and the outside consultants that work for the city as well. They've just been great to work with and you should be proud of them. They really do work for keeping the intent and integrity of the city of Lemoore. And we really enjoyed working together and coming up with some really cool creative solutions to some of the issues that were raised with the project. Uh, Wathen Castanos is not new to Lemoore. We actually built some projects here before. The Atherton project is one of ours. We had several phases of that. And then we also built a 20 lot subdivision just off of Bush, just east of this project site. Uh, this site is somewhat of an infill site. It's kind of one of the last remaining sites that hasn't been developed in the area. What we're able to do with this project is connect some key city infrastructure with the project, connect some bike paths and things like that. So we're excited to be able to do that. And then in the end, it'll look like a more finished community or neighborhood in that area. Um, we're proud to say we are consistent with the general plan, staying within the low density residential zoning. Uh, we are asking for a PUD. I did wanna make one clarification in the lot sizes. Our smaller lot is 42 feet wide, but the we have a larger lot size that's actually 52 feet wide. It, they're both not 42. So there is, that's okay. Um, but I just wanted to make that clear that we do have a larger lot size and then there is a smaller lot size there. Um, and although we're asking for some concessions on setbacks, we really have uh, believe that there, we are making limited to no impacts to the aesthetic of this neighborhood overall. And the reason I say that is we have really maximized the open space parks and trailways in this neighborhood. The park is a one acre park, uh, as Steve mentioned, and it is just full with amenities. It's more amenities than we put in any other of our parks and our subdivisions. Well, we're proposing two different play structures for different ages. We're actually proposing some exercise equipment for some adults, outdoor play games, picnic areas. So it's just loaded with a lot of amenities and activities for a variety of, of ages. The trailways we're very proud of as well for the connectivity of uh, pedestrian travel just for that neighborhood or even people coming in from other neighborhoods to come in, enjoy that park, do that kind of trailway walk that he, uh, Steve mentioned was 0.7 miles, thank you for that. That's that's an interesting fact. And they can just go around and, and play and see the aesthetic of the neighborhood, which we'll be very proud of. Um, we found opportunity with this irrigation ditch. It was It's an open swale ditch right now, and we were going to need to underground it and pipe it. 
and put an easement over it. And initially we had talked about, oh, do we put these at the back of the lots? What do we do here? And together we came up with this concept of making this dual use or, you know, amenitizing this easement basically. And so we have this 30 foot trailway that uh, as Steve mentioned, will be 10 feet of sidewalk, a nice 10 foot swath on either side of that sidewalk for uh, landscape to go in. There will be limited trees just to talk about the tree concern because there will be an irrigation pipe underneath, but also will stay in line with the tree standards for the city uh, and make sure we have root barriers and the rest of it. We also don't want the sidewalks to be undermined in the future. We'd like to keep it nice and clean. And with all the other utilities coming in to serve the homes, we'll be limited to what we can install anyway, but it'll be as lush as we can make it with shallow root plants as best we can. The thing I like about that trail and putting it on the front side of these lots is that impacts about 45 of the lots, which now creates an even further setback of these homes as you drive through or walk through this neighborhood. The enhancement of the streetscape really gets amplified when you do that. You don't have all the homes right up against the street. You now have a whole side of the street that's now set back even further and just creates a more open feel as you, you drive through or walk through that neighborhood. Um, we have updated our home elevations and have a mix of architectural styles, colors, and variation. We are proposing two product types in here, which varies it even further. I think there's about 42 to 45 different home styles that you can get with that list of different product types, elevations, and the like. So we're, we're very proud of that too. We don't like cookie cutter neighborhoods. We're very, we like to have that variety and everyone to feel like their house has their own kind of fingerprint on it. Uh, parking is always a concern in neighborhoods. So again, with the PUD, although we're asking for some reduced setbacks, we wanted to make sure we had sufficient parking, off street parking available in the driveways. And so we're maintaining that 18 feet and, uh, even on some of these lots, it's likely we'll, we'll push it to 20 feet where we can. Um, we do have some lots that are extra deep just throughout the project. And so we do have some minimum square footages and lot sizes on the list, but most of our average is a little bit above that. And then we have some really large lots like those ones we were talking about just adjacent to the properties off of Bush. Um, let's see. Yeah, and uh, we have built these homes in other valley areas. So this isn't all new product to us. We're building the Ariette style homes, which are the 42 foot wide lots. We have those in Clovis, Madera County, and in Fresno. And we have hundreds of homeowners, very happy. And uh, they're well-functioning homes that look really nice. And those neighborhoods look really fantastic if you ever have a chance to go into those areas and take a look at those neighborhoods. They just, they do really well. And again, the big part of that is with the reduced setbacks is having that open space park trail amenities that they come together as a community meet up and, you know, get out and about that way. So I really appreciate your time. Wathen understands um, our responsibility. We have to connect uh, and make livable neighborhoods. And we have a high integrity for what we do and the quality of, of product that we put out there. So I hope you've seen that with projects we've built in Lemoore before, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And any questions for Ms. Burns? Well, you, you were wondering about a start date. Yes, oh, start, start date, date. What are you sorry, guys yes. We want to start as soon as we can. Okay. <laughs> so really, it starts with this. Uh, we've, you know, the planning part takes quite a bit of time in the background. We're here today looking for that recommendation. We hope for that we can go to council and proceed immediately into improvement plans and final map for that first phase. Ideally, we'd love to start in Q1 of 2024. So the first three months of next year is what we have on our schedule. So However quickly staff can move <laughs> plans through, we will we will get there and we will get moving on it. So we're, we're definitely motivated to get this going. And part of that first phase, just to reiterate, is the park will be in there, some major storm infrastructure will go in with that first phase, that basin, and then a lot of that trailway and the undergrounding of that irrigation ditch will happen all within that first phase. That two bedroom, two bath, the small one that you have, the, the smallest one that you have. Uh -huh. 
do you see a pretty good market for that? I mean, would you consider that a starter home retirement? I would home? consider it a starter home for mm -hmm. sure. It is not our foregone favorite. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a way of, you know, getting someone's foot in the door on buying a home. Honestly, yeah. it's not the most pop our most popular are actually the larger square footage ones, but it does offer some opportunity for, for some affordability for others to come in and own a home. And like I said, get their foot in the door you know, hold on to it for some time and then resell it and then move up themselves. So. So plan 1927 includes a, a junior accessory accessory dwelling in, is that right? 19. Mm -hmm. How many of those do you think or have planned to put in? That's actually one of our new plans, but man, is there a demand for it. We is, we yeah. hear about it almost in every neighborhood we build in. They've asked for these junior ADUs. And so we started developing those on the design side just this last year and started kind of feathering those into some of our product lines because there is people are asking for them. Absolutely. So because it's a junior, it's actually attached, correct? It's attached. It is correct. attached. So it's okay. Is that included in the three bedroom, two and a half bath? No, I think that's the fourth bedroom to it. So, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. It's an addition. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. So it's its own bedroom, bath. Correct. Cooking facility. Yeah. Okay. With a separate entrance, even it just has oh, a shared wall gotcha. and it does have an inch, you know, you can go into the regular dwelling unit yeah. with it, but yeah, it has its own entrance. Okay. Have you entered, have you, I forgot if you said, did you introduce this somewhere else to see if there's a market? For we just, we just started introducing it into oh. uh, subdivisions that are already going. So yeah. we're adding it into those. And then obviously on our new ones, we're providing that. As, okay. As and you're seeing is pretty popular. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah. 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 And other builders, you know, they build ADUs and things like that with their, yeah. or, you know, the multi-gen units you've probably heard of things like that. And those, those are very on high demand and very popular. So one of the biggest concerns, I don't mean, is anybody else having any questions or anything like that? Really? One of the concerns, and we've had this come up at other meetings, is um, one of our commissioners here also talked about lot 150, 151, and 152, mm -hmm. is we have two established homes there, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's owned by the Lee family, and um, so they're not here, it doesn't look like, but they may come to the council meeting or something like that, or they may not, I don't know, but... Sure. Um, just looks like a wood fence we put back there. Just some concerns is they've never had anything back there, that mm -hmm. agriculture. And now there possibly may be a two-story home looking right. in the back of their yard sure. for the first time ever. Yeah. So I understand that. Yeah. As a homeowner myself, I understand that. And uh, the two stories are a concern. We did intentionally and, you know, it actually, uh, made sense geometry wise to make those lots deeper. And we thought that would be a benefit to those existing homes there. You know those... So those lots are excessively deep. Yeah. To someone's point, I'm not sure who said it. We would keep the front setbacks as what they are and just gain them all this rear yard mm -hmm. backyard, which is really a value to a buyer or some buyer. And so we find that to be very important to keep that backyard as big as possible. So we would keep it close to the front uh, and then I can't, I don't know the dimension to the back, but it would, it would be a big backyard compared to where that fence line would be. And then adjacent to where that property would be just to the North. Do you know if those three lots have plans for the two stories, one, of, one of the two story models? It's, it's most likely than not that it'll be a two story just for the square footage that people are most likely going to want to grab in this product line. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that we only have two single stories in the whole mix, it's most likely than not that those will be two story homes. Just because someone buying that lot is likely buying a premium for that lot and, you know, is going to be someone who wants to probably build a bigger house. But we're not pre-plotting, so... Someone could come and say, hey, I just want a single story on this. And that could be a possibility as well. I have just one other question. It's, it's sure. a little bit off key here. 
do you build after somebody has interest and puts down a deposit for the lot or you just build and sell as inventory comes up? Uh, no, we we start with someone coming in. Mm -hmm. What we try and do is an even flow schedule for our trades. And so if we only get two buyers, we may put in a couple specs is what oh, they call gotcha. it. Okay. Just to get like this regular four every month kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, but if we get four buyers, then we just start the four that the buyers have. We prefer a dirt buyer is what we call it. And so they can pick all their amenities and all the finishes okay. that they want to do. So yeah, we we do it that way. I have no other questions. Anybody else? Comment, not necessarily a question. Uh, since I raised the issue about the trees, I wanted to say that uh, that 30 foot area with 10 foot sidewalk in the middle, 10 feet of landscape and inside looks very appealing. Mm -hmm. It's just the trees are a huge issue. Okay. And so that's that's the concern that I have. But I like what you've done with that. Okay. If I were to make a comment, 42 different elevation plans is excellent. Oh, good. Yeah, you're not seeing that cookie cutter. Pretty you're down at one like end of the variety, street and you're so, like, yeah. wow, yeah. you know, okay. Yeah, and the six pack that Lamore holds true to, we actually do that as a kind of our own company goal mm -hmm. when we're in other neighborhoods that don't require that. So I think that's why we have so much variety. And we, we've had some of this product for quite a while, and then we add new plans into it just because it's what the market demands. And then it naturally creates more variety, which is all a benefit to that community. In your other <clears throat> projects, do the variety of homes still, are they all still popular? Or do they, or do they tend to pick the newer models no it's it's just interesting because it really is price point driven on some of these you know you get up to that next level people just can't quite make it there and so sometimes it's price driven and then sometimes someone just can pick and choose what they want to do mm -hmm. so we end up finding a variety anyway and like i said we won't we won't sell the same plan next to each other same elevation style you know so we naturally mm -hmm. move buyers to something else or move them down the street just to keep that variety oh, going. Nice. So, yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? No? Well, I appreciate your time and Thank your you, consideration this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public that'd like to make a comment? Christy, anything? No. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment at 617. Commissioners, discussions, anything? Well, if there's, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if nobody has any discussion, then I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2023 13, recommending the approval of the tentative subdivision map number 939, major site plan review number 2022 02, the PUD number 202201, in accordance with the finding conditions with the resolution. Do I have to add anything? From if, I, if I may. Chair, the yes, the changed condition that we recommended to go from the tenth home to the fiftieth home for when the park should be done. Mm -hmm. It should be ready. Add, add that to the oh, it should be ready. Add that so, to the motion. You can just add it with the condition of with yeah, the condition yes. of with that condition. <laughs> so we can say the condition of the park to be completed by the fiftieth certificate the, okay, of occupancy. Yeah. With the condition of the park to be completed by the fiftieth occupancy. Instead of the tent. Perfect. Excellent. Do I have a second on that big long statement? <laughs> I'll second it. Thank you. All right. We'll take a vote. Uh, Commissioner Echegon. Aye. Commissioner Brewer. Aye. Commissioner Clement. Aye. Commissioner Mead. Aye. 
And Commissioner Couch, that's me, and I vote aye as well. Thank you. Is so we'll take this recommendation to the City Council. Okay. Thank you. All right, move on to item number six, Director's Report. Nathan. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, not a whole lot on to report out. Just uh, Helena, we finally got plans back today, approved plans from InterWest. So now we'll start working on fees so they can get going out there on the ground. I don't know if I said it last month or not, but we did get a tenant improvement for Baskin Robbins over by Kmart. And um, Didi's discount, they're moving through the process. Looks like those plans are, are almost complete as well. They're going in over and um, next to the uh, grocery outlet. And then I did a special presentation to council on the 29th of last month, potentially go after uh, some revenue raising ideas. So at the next council meeting, I'll be uh, seeking direction from council on what types of fees or tax we want to go after as a city in the next election cycle to help raise revenues for the general fund. Thank you. Nathan, real quick question. How's Kmart going? Are you allowed to say they weren't? So they, they were, were highlighted by our retail strategies. They've actually had three offers and the owner has declined to entertain any offers mm -hmm. on the building. So it's sitting empty right now, yeah. um, continuing to work through it. I do have multiple calls into Benderson. That's the property management to uh, have conversations with them because originally they said they were willing to subdivide down to 20. It's about an 80,000 plus square foot facility. Yeah. They did say they would subdivide into 20,000 square foot sections, but now they're not willing to do that and they have not entertained any offers. So um, still, still working through that one. Yeah. What, what about Maverick? Are they getting ready to break ground or anything? It looks good out there. They really yeah, Maverick's, moved to, Maverick's on track. We're still just oh. going through plan reviews and oh, okay. and things like that. But yeah, they should be breaking ground. Uh, I, I don't have a date for the ground, but yeah, they're they're still on they're still on track. And we also have some other interests in the adjacent property to finish off that mm -hmm. subdivision as well. So I did I did a market tour of the rental company um, last week. Christy and I were out doing a market tour, but it looks like we might be getting a, a nationwide rental rental uh, equipment. No, oh, potentially good. coming to town. Okay, we're in the it's us between us and Fresno, so. Oh, but uh, they do like this area. Strategically, we're a better location than Fresno, so as long as we can get get something, get a good deal for them, we're, we should be all right. Gotcha. Okay. The nineteenth and Bush. Oh, totally forgot. Yes, AMG, the affordable housing project. We did receive the grant for a little over $25 million. So that is moving forward. That's the affordable housing order by Smith and Oleander. In addition to the grant for the, the project itself, the city will receive about an additional $2.5 million for offsite improvements. And then CART will receive about $186,000, $187,000 for transportation needs on that development as well. So, so yeah, that was good news. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The 19th and Bush site, is, is that still going through? Yes, and we're meeting with the developer tomorrow for lunch. <laughs> right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Hmm? 19th and Bush should be coming in October or November to you. Because they, they wanted to make some changes, right? No. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number seven, commission reports, requests, anything, comments? No? Well, if, if I could make a comment um, before we adjourn, um, this day, 9-11 will always live in, in our hearts and minds. Everybody, I can say probably in this room, um, probably will always remember where they were, what time, what they were doing on this day. I think it, how many years ago was that? Was it 18? Eight, yeah. So, um, but anyways, always keep this day in, in mind and, and the significance of it. So with that said, I don't think there's any other. Yes, sir. We, we lost the memorial. Oh, yes. Yeah. What is Tober? I had yes. the opportunity to coach him. That was what a loss as well your local yes and he was the um public works director was that right 
he retired as a public works director no 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 oh sorry no i don't know no, nine eleven. Oh, sorry, it's sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking of someone else. I apologize. I apologize. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Commissioner Clement. All right. With that, I believe we are finished. We are come to the end, and we will adjourn at six twenty-four p.m. Thank you, everybody.